All right. So again, welcome to Bold Party with Purpose. Don't fall for the cup. And we will get right into our amazing panelists. I am so excited. All this cheesing is so serious because I just really feel like this is definitely a discussion that is needed and um, I feel will be beneficial to us all. Um, again, feel free to unmute yourselves and share at times or share in the chat. We do keep a lively chat and um, I do try to check the chat while we are chatty. All right, so our first panelist that I will introduce um, and allow them to give, uh, share a little bit as well, is Ms. Everlene Rutherford. Rutherford. Everlene Rutherford has been a family and marriage advocate since 2015. She has been married to Brandon Rutherford for 10 years and they managed the family and marriage page. They also founded a nonprofit, Village Connection Inc., which helps out children in foster care and homeless outreach in their community. She has a passion for outreach and seeing marriages flourish. Village Connection was founded in 2019 and to date, they have provided 207 foster care love bags, 252 homeless outreach care bags, and over 150 caseworker appreciation gifts. Her and her husband also are marriage advocates. They believe in building a strong foundation for your marriage and that you're a team. They have spoken at marriage events with various topics such as finances, love, expectations, and teamwork. And now she is here with us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, just to summarize it, I just realized we've been on my bio. I need to update my bio because it's 11 years now. Um, happily married. And, and I just enjoy talking about marriage and love. And prior to me and my husband um, starting our marriage ministry at a church before we moved to Atlanta, we were over uh, the single adult ministry. So, mm -hmm. so I'm used to talking about single topics and diving into that and everything. So I'm just excited to be here. Um, just ready to jump right on in. Like me and my husband, we've, we've been married for 11 years. We met, he knew, we both came out of relationships and had multiple long term relationships. So, mm -hmm. so we knew we were the one and we were engaged after nine months um and been married for 11 years now so so you know when you know and we'll talk about that more <laughs> yes definitely welcome and thank you again for joining us um next thank you for having me yeah um next we have miss sarah j sarah j formerly known as sarah jackson was born and raised in dayton ohio but her family relocated to Kennesaw, Georgia once her parents married. Having attended 32 schools, Sarah J. graduated from Martin Luther King Jr. High School and received her bachelor's from Kennesaw State University. She obtained her master's in English from Southern New Hampshire University and currently hosts two podcasts and a lifestyle blog. Please welcome Sarah J. Hey, y'all. Um, I adopted the y'all from Georgia, so I'll keep it. Um, I'm extremely excited to be here. Um, I didn't know cuffing season was a thing until it actually happened to me. So I'm excited about being able to discuss that. And I don't think it's just the winter. It can be any time <laughs> to get caught up and cuffed up, OK? <laughs> um, super excited. I'm looking forward to all the, the wisdom on the panel and even from those who are attending. So thank you, B, for having me. My pleasure, completely. My pleasure. And Sarah J, she is being modest in her bio. She knows how to speak the truth, but in a way that you're cracking up, but still getting your life. So definitely excited <laughs> to hear what she has to share. And our final panelist is Miss Lori McIver. Lori McIver is a senior at Georgia Southern University pursuing a degree in education. 
She is a part of an organization on campus where she is the chaplain. Lori also has a nonprofit organization with her best friend called Girls Do Matter Inc. that empowers girls and women to build true confidence, pursue every dream, and do it all with purpose. She uses writing, teaching, and her love for people to build her God-given purpose in life. Welcome, Lori. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be on this panel this morning. Um, my best friend is actually on the line who we founded the organization together, Malaysia Evans. So I'm excited that she's on the line as well. And so I'm just excited for the wisdom that's going to be shared and that we can apply after this call. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for joining. Thank all of you ladies for joining um, the panel. Um, Everlead and Lori, um, you don't know me from Adam, so, but we are getting to know each other now, uh, and we've you know, had our talks as well. Um, but I do thank you for your willingness to um, join and share your wisdom. So um, let's get into it. I'm gonna dive right in. Um, if you or you may or may not have seen, I did a live on Wednesday uh, with another one of our um, beautiful sisters, our beauties, bold beauty, um, Miss Mika, positively meek, and uh, she shared some um, some truth bombs, some jewels, some gems that I'll sprinkle in here as well. Um, but we talked about cupping season and I shared a few definitions that I found. <laughs> so the uh, Collins Dictionary calls cupping season the period of autumn and winter when single people are considering or considered likely to seek settled relationships rather than en engage in casual affairs. And the Urban Dictionary has a few definitions, but I'll give this one here. Um, it said, during the fall and winter months, people who would normally rather be single or promiscuous find themselves, along with the rest of the world, desiring to be cuffed or tied down by a serious relationship. The cold weather and prolonged indoor activity causes singles to become more lonely and desperate to be cuffed. Um, and then I didn't write it down, but there's another definition which basically said the opposite and said it was a made up time. <laughs> that means nothing. So um, with the very definitions and ideas around it, I wanted to start off by asking you ladies, <laughs> yes, love the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Breaks it all the way down. Um, I want to start off by asking you ladies, uh, do you um, believe in cuffing season? If so, you know, what, what does cuffing season mean to you? <laughs> That's to the panelists. Um, hello, hello everyone again. I do believe that there is a cuffing season, but unfortunately, I think there's a cuffing season year round. I think at any time someone just wants to shack up, my version is that they just want to be with someone but not be committed, but just have someone, mm -hmm. and that's how I see cuffing season. But I don't. There probably is more during the winter time, to be honest, now that I think about it, but <laughs> I think you can get cuffed year round and stuck into a situation where someone just wants to have someone and not necessarily be committed in a relationship for, you know, someone who's, you know, looking to be um, married in a future with or anything, just so that you can say you have someone with you to take the parties and events and just to say, I have someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there there have been studies, <laughs> according to what I found, um, that they say that during the winter, guys have more testosterone, and um, in general, people have less oxytocin, um, and they believe that those things could contribute to guys being more prone to relationships during winter months and people in general um, wanting uh, someone near them or close to them to replace those happy endorphins or provide those happy endorphins. 
that was something uh, an idea but yeah i agree with you everly so um I'll chime in. So do I think it's a real thing? Absolutely, Everly, and I absolutely agree with you. It can be done year round. I do believe the data that you found, Zanita, has, is actually really true because it is cold and you got Michael Blue Blay, he's getting ready to start playing. You got, you know, Christmas trees everywhere, peanut butter soup or whatever, whatever kind of soup you got, it does make you want to share that with someone. And, you know, being honest, you know, you get tired of with your girlfriends sometimes. It's like, sis, we always do movie night. So I want to do movie night with him. And he might not even like the movie, but after a while, he liked your couch. And I can see how that kind of can mash all together. And now that's they, you know, there was no real saying to it, no real title. And it wasn't really intentional because I came for the movie. I left with a man. So um, I, I definitely think it's a um, thing, but I, I mostly think we as women might get caught up a little bit with it because we'll look at the need versus the want. Like I want someone who's a provider or a protector, who's going to take care of these bills, pay these student loans, whatever it may be. And then the need is, well, I want a cuddle buddy or I want a heated blanket and a heated body. And it kind of outweighs and you kind of fall into the cussing season. So true. Um, for me, I would say is that I didn't know like it was a such thing as cuffing season until like I got on social media and it's coming around, you know, the sweaters are coming out, you know, hot chocolate and, you know, Christmas time is coming around. They're like, you know, oh, it's cuffing season now, you know? And so when I was like looking at everybody on social media, I was like, well, sometimes it gives like this pressure, like that it's a certain season where everybody feels like, oh, well, I need to get in a relationship because it's cold and I want to snuggle up and I want to cuddle up with somebody. And sometimes it gives that pressure to people, almost like some people have this idea that like 24, 25, I'm going to get married. And I felt like, you know, the people who were saying like cupping season, they made it like, okay, within this time frame, like, I'm, I want to get with somebody. And when we have, like, have that pressure, we rush things. And so we know that when we're cooking, you know, if we're rushing something, it's going to be a disaster. Or even me with being in college, like, or us when we have assignments to do, if we wait till that last minute, like, it's going to be a disaster. And so I feel like cupping season brings that pressure onto people, like, I have to have somebody, you know? Mm. And, you know, to, to, to spin off of what you're saying about the pressure, hi, everybody, by the way. Anyway, so to reiterate that, the pressure comes in also because when you're talking about these cold months, we have all these holidays that are back to back. So there's Thanksgiving time and then there's Christmas. So it was like, this is how when you get, your, get with your family and it's like, who you bringing to Thanksgiving for dinner this, this year? And it's like, you kind of feel that pressure because it's like, you want to have that person with you to go to all these family events and, and you will start building towards having somebody with you for stuff like that. So I remember feeling that type of pressure when I was younger, like, oh, yeah, I'm about to be 25. I'm supposed to be married at this point. Or, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. And I'm like, my dad's like, well, are you bringing someone with you? And I'm like, no, not this year. So I feel like the pressure of it, of having somebody does start to eat away at you this time of the year. I mean, it happens all throughout the year. I agree. I definitely think it's year round. But for some reason, it's this time of the year where it's just more adamant that you lock it down and, and find somebody to share your time with of the opposite sex and and i agree with you and, and that's the worst and that's why i tell people is like don't let no one rush you into being with someone like enjoy like like people go from getting out of high school and they feel like they got to go to college find the one get married have a family and have this so-called life set out where everyone's rushing them are you with someone are you with someone and it's like when do people get to enjoy being single going out having fun and doing that without being attached to someone it's like people feel like you got to have someone with you to be happy um to be complete and it's like no you're already complete you're already happy just the way that you are you don't have to go out and say you have someone like people used to always tell me girl when are you gonna get somebody when are you gonna you know settle down um they called me bougie because I would break up with a dude real quick. I'm like, uh, it ain't working out. And they're like, girl, you're never going to find no one if you're acting this way. 
who you got. And I'm like, I just want to have fun. I wanted to travel. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I didn't want kids early. I didn't want to settle down early. And it's like, I knew what I wanted, but everyone else will keep trying to put their expectations on you of when you're supposed to be married, when you're supposed to settle down. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's like, that's always frustrated me. It's like, I tell people, have fun, you know, date, you know, if this person's not for you, then okay, let them know, hey, this ain't working out. But don't feel like you got to have someone for people to think that you're somebody all of a sudden, that you're all of a sudden accomplished something in life because now I got a boyfriend. But if he ain't no good, then you're just moving nowhere, just doing a lot of talking, not progressing nowhere just to say you have someone like I enjoyed my single life like I had fun I traveled I I enjoyed it and now I can say I'm happily married because I'm not taking those urges where I say I wish I would have did this I wish I would have did that or you know my husband don't complete me he did not complete me I was already complete before I met him yeah hey my two cents do you mind if I just throw something else in that? Because I think we um, all are in, we're coming out of that generation of if you don't have a man, you're not valuable. So I know growing up, my mom was like, where are your man now? And I'm like, I'm 12. You shouldn't want me to have one. But her mom was also like, I mean, I'm just saying, her mom was also like, where your man at? And her mom's mom was like, where your man at? And it was like the value of a woman, the quality of the woman that you are was based on your ability to have and keep a man. So I can hear and understand all the pressures about it. And we're just coming out of that to where women are able to say, no, I'm successfully single and I enjoy my singleness versus girl, I got a man, he ain't worth the darn. They're like, well, at least you got a man or like, it's like, okay, he's not doing what I need him to do, but girl, but you still got your man. Or when people look at somebody in a mall and they're like, girl, look at that. And they're like, girl, she got a man though. It's like, is it quality? So I did want to throw that in there. And that's my, that's my one sense. <laughs> yes. I love it. And um, that reminds me, I'm putting this quote in the chat, in the, in the chat. You don't have to have someone to feel that you are some guy. I love it. Um, but uh, that reminds me of something that, um, that Meek said. Um, she was talking about the difference between a bonus package and benefit uh, or benefits and how um, people mess up when they look for um, a, they look to a partner as benefits um, in, in giving the analogy of like a job. She did a lot better of a job that described this, but I'm going to try so she was saying how, you know, at work you have benefits and you have bonuses. And bonuses, um, you know, you don't necessarily need them, but sometimes they can um, come, uh, come in and help you at a time of need. Um, but overall, bonuses are a plus. They're an additive. Um, but you already, you know, you have your benefits. And the bonuses just add to whatever you have, but you, your your benefits are included in your your base, you know, of what you know that you receive or that you have rather. And how we should look at our partner as bonuses, not benefits, because we need to be whole uh, within ourselves and um, let the partner just be an additive. And they should definitely be an additive, not subtracting. I love that. Any more thoughts on that one? No? Okay. So um, the next question uh, Sarah, you had mentioned earlier that you didn't realize cuffing season until you got in it. So let's go ahead and go there, okay? So uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Was it girl, I didn't think was you was going to call me out. Um, girl, I had to Google what overt and covert meant, even with a degree. <laughs> girl. <laughs> like, I was like, what? Why, was it obvious or unobvious? It wasn't obvious until it was obvious. Um, so, yes, 
um, so I, okay. So yeah, I was in a couple of cuffing seasons. Okay. Let me tell you though. Let me, let me explain them. Let me explain. Growing up with survival needs, trying to live a lifestyle, you will always be in some type of situationship. It's, it's going to be tough until you are able to do what you need to do for yourself. So for me, I leaned heavily in, in certain areas, um, which a man could provide. Um, and it was cold outside, you know, and um, because I wasn't able to provide that need for myself. So um, my most recent, because I'd like to say I've shunned from cuffing season, but then I think about it, I'm like, that sis, that was a, that was a whole cuff. So last um, holidays, <laughs> he actually didn't come to any of my holiday events because I actually tell my family and friends, don't ask, like, don't ask, ain't nobody coming, where the kids at, I'm gonna play with them, I'm eating at the kids table this year, don't ask. Um, <laughs> But this particular person, it was it was subtle, you know. Um, he was a handsome guy on Instagram. Hello. Um, slid clean in my DMs. What a joke. I laughed. That's how to get me, okay? <laughs> the enemy knows. <laughs> so somebody with some corny jokes. So I'm like, that's funny. And so he's like, all right, bet. what about this? And I'm like, ooh, that was funny too. He's like, can I get your number? If you cracking jokes all night, you can have my number all day, okay? Um, <clears throat> What ends up happening is because of this person's, because my openness for and readiness for love and this person's, you know, ability to move quick, it kind of just kind of took me quickly. So it was on the phone one day, the next day, FaceTime, the next day, you want to go get dinner. The next week, it's like, you want to watch a movie? <laughs> and um, as I'm learning more and more about this individual i'm finding out like man this dude doesn't have a car like this dude he like kind of believes in god like he kind of like he stay out all hours of the night with the homies he got a female best friend i'm like wait a whoa whoa and so i was right and that's the i'm like y'all spend a night <laughs> what is this? come for her so as i'm going through my checklist and i'm a very cerebral person to where if i get a moment to think about it ladies y'all know how it is if we get a moment to think about it I mean, like, when we think about it, we be like, now, Sarah, what you doing? So I had some time, but he was hitting me so, like, constant, constant, constant. I was just like, oh, this is awesome. I'm out and about. Look at my shoes. I'm cute. Uh, uh. And then by the time I got a moment to think about it, I was like, wait a minute, sis. This is a whole, this isn't what you want. And you are, and, and this person unknowingly is playing on your need. Like, my need to share my time and my space, my need to, um, feel like you know I look cute outside of my my own self thoughts and this person's complimenting that like those small things that I wasn't willing to really take note of had been fulfilled by this particular person just like within a three-week span and so I was able to say all right hold on um this isn't what I want this isn't what I need and I can watch Netflix by myself and I even bought a star subscription as well um but that that was that just as quick like it was Dag is cold. Darn, I sure would love for somebody to put some hot chocolate in my cup to I'm dating this person now to being able to pull myself out of it because even anytime you build something off of a unmet need that you can provide for yourself just ends in heartbreak ultimately. So that was my cuff. That was the edited version too of my cuff situation <laughs> just last season. And he still won't stop texting me, but So what was the the straw that um, that or what Broke Sarah's back. That allowed you to be like okay he is giving me um, what I feel I need outside of myself but it won't quite benefit me. So in the right. So what it was, was um, actively checking in with myself and asking myself, all honesty, y'all, I'm going to be honest. Um, when this person would come over, this person would take their shoes off and jump on my couch. It's a hard no for me because it's kind of like, why are you getting so comfortable here? Like, you shouldn't be so comfortable here in my place. 
So that would continue to agitate me. And um, this person will always kind of cut me off in conversation. So as I'm talking to this person, what kind of really divvied it up was this person's dismissive. And that doesn't work with Sarah. You have to be open to listen and um, you can't be dismissive. This person was always only mostly available after seven. Like, and um, the, the conversation would be, hey, I was just thinking we could catch a movie tonight, obviously at my place, right? So now you need to be charged an AMC fee because what are we doing? Um, and so those things, those obvious, but at first was something I offered like, oh yeah, you can come watch a movie, no problem. Like those, oh, get comfortable. I didn't mean comfortable, comfortable. I was just, I was just saying that. That's something that you say to be kind. Those things, seeing that that was being taken advantage of and always ending in, movie, 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 now you're spending a night, it was like, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted to answer to down the line. Like, that's not something that I wanted to be how something was formulated. So just having that conversation like this isn't what I wanted. And I'll be honest, ladies, you know, his response was, let it flow, let life live. And I'm like, that goes for, for you, boo, that, not over here. So that was just kind of, that was the straw that kind of made me say, separate mm -hmm. yes I've, I've heard that yeah i just want to go with the flow i hate it or i hate it no we need a path sir we need a path <laughs> i need some intention but i'll jump back off my soapbox uh but everly can you speak to that <laughs> well i was going to say that one thing that I mentioned it earlier is that people would say that because like I would and I wouldn't call it you know that person was my boyfriend or whatever but I would date people and and I would do an assessment like okay as I'm dating them if if they're not checking off the boxes and then I'm like okay this is not working I would tell them straight up this is not working and like people like my friends like girl you so picky you're so bougie they would call me all that because I would not you know, they're like, girl, you can't keep a man. But it's like, it's not me can't keep a man. I'm letting them go because they're not meeting my qualifications. And don't be afraid to say, no, this is not working. And it's not that you're, you know, can't keep a man or whatever. And it's like, I wasn't like out there with them, each man and everything I was dating. But it was like, if I knew, like, there's one dude I dated. I didn't realize when we started dating that he was a smoker. He got real lax with me, started smoking. I'm like, oh, what? I don't, I don't like no one that smokes. Like, no, no, I don't know how I didn't catch it before, but no, this is not going to work. Oh, babe, you know, I'll change. No, because if you ain't did it yet, like, I'm not, don't date no one and expect to change them later. And that's the problem. Like, people date and they want, uh, you know, and I've done it before. You want, you want this project. Well, I can, I can change him. He'll change to meet what I want. And then once you get in there, he ain't going to change. You got to be willing to accept this man the way that he is. And if you can't accept him the way that he is, then you need to move on and be fine with moving on and don't care what no one says. You can call me whatever. I can't keep the man, whatever. I let him go because I don't want to be with someone who smokes in the long term because I know you can't. It's hard that you get someone to stop smoking. And if you ain't done it by now, you're not going to do it. And I'm not going to try to beg you, plead you. I'm not doing none of that. So I would be like, okay, this is not working. And people were like, just because he's like, I can't, I can remember people telling me just because he smokes. Are you kidding me, girl? Because, you know, this guy, he had a good job. He was good looking. You know, he checked a lot of other boxes, but it's like, I can't deal with the smoke smell. I can't like, but he, he eventually let himself go and started. I don't know what he was doing before changing shirts, showering up or whatever, but I didn't catch it before. And then all of a sudden, couple weeks later, I like, you're always smelling like smoke now. And I was like, I can't do it. And like other stuff, men who tell you, oh, I go to church. I believe in God. Take them to church. Actually see how they do. Don't sit there and say, I go to church. And he sit there and be on his phone the whole time. That ain't, that, that's not what I want. I want someone who can go for God with me. You know, I want someone, if I'm down, he can hold, he can pray, pray for me. I don't want someone where I got to drag to church every Sunday I don't want someone who I got to tell my ladies and my friends in church, y'all, could y'all pray for my husband, get him in church and all that. I don't want none of that. I want someone who this is who God has for me. And that's why people, I mean, they'll call you everything, but don't be afraid. Like, you know, like she said, don't be afraid to walk away 
you know, um, like Sarah said, don't be afraid to walk away from someone. If you know this ain't right for you, walk away. Block his number, delete him if he's still bothering you. But don't be afraid because I did that. And I walked away from dudes and I was fine with it because that's not what I want. And I didn't want to get tied into something that I did not want and then be stuck with this dude. And then I'd be like, one of them ladies, oh, pray for my husband, be going through it again. And, you know, I got friends who were married and they, every time we got together, like their husband was something else. And I'm like, you knew this before you married him. So it's like, I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> it's like, he was this way before you married him. And now you want to fuss about it. So walk away if it ain't right for you. That's the end of my soapbox. But walk I, away. Um, I know I <laughs> um, Emily said a lot, but I do want to go back to one part she did mention where she was talking about um, about projects. And I know for me, every single one of my situationships started off with me seeing like a potential in a man. And I wanted to be that fixer. And so like, um, God was just like telling me, it's just like, you're not the potter. You know, I am. I mold him into the man I want him to be. And I was trying to be the potter and take control and like mold him to um, like what I desired, you know? So I was seeing that potential for, right, <laughs> a building brother. <laughs> I wanted to build him just for me, you know? And so anytime I did that, it was a disaster. Every single time. Every single time. And so, yeah, I just wanted to comment on that because sometimes women, we just want to be fixers, you know? I know he can That's change. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I know he can change. Like, we want, we want to fix things. And so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that holding on for potential is real. I've, I've had several conversations, and it, it all goes back to, uh, well, several conversations where a guy, you know, turned out to be, I won't say trash, but... Um, not the right guy and it's like you know you you saw the signs you saw the signs early but but we held on why did we hold on sis and it, it always goes back to that potential but he can be and he did this but what is he showing you consistently or what is he revealing to you over time those are things we we definitely got to watch for I also think it, it, I think it boils down to sometimes you, you put your wants before your needs. I think someone mentioned that um, earlier. Like, I know I've been in situations where I can see all the red flags. Like, you may be a really given person and you're very consistent, but you don't so much do that with me. But I want that. And I know, like you just said, we have, you have the potential to be that person. So if I just keep working on you, keep showing you these certain things, you'll become that person for me. And I think a lot of times we get into these types of situations because we really try to make that guy be what we need more so over what we want. Like, it's like, I want this man and I know that if I just work on him, he can become what I need. No, you have to, at the first, the first moment, put your needs first. It's not about what you want. Like, oh, because he's cute. Oh, because he's tall. Oh, because he got money. Those are all wants. What are the needs that you need in your life to not so much as complete you? Like you said, we're going to already be completed before we do this. But who's going to compliment you? What do you need in your life to compliment you? And I think a lot of times we put our wants first and disregard what we need in our life. And that's how we get into the situations that we get into. Definitely. Um, and even in getting those wants, we only get them for a temporal amount of time. So that, uh, that, uh, that ROI ain't there. <laughs> and your time is worth a lot more than what you're getting back. So um, that's another thing uh, that I definitely encourage is looking to the future um, at, at times when we may want to give in to those wants, how much will this really benefit me long term? Because usually a lot of times, I know for me, I don't speak on anybody else, but a lot of times for me, when I give in to that want, when I look back on it after it blew up in my face, it's like, I could have dumped out. I, I, I could have just got me a weighted blanket. I could have, I, I could have sat at home with Buddy, you know, and a little Netflix and, and had a lot more peace in my life than this was worth. 
So if we can take that time to, uh, as Sarah said, uh, sit with myself and be real with myself up front, we can save ourselves some hurt on the back end. I do believe. Okay, so um, kind of going in that same vein, um, what do you feel are some uh, some keys to gauging intentionality? Pass to anyone. Okay. Say that again. I didn't catch that. Oh, what do you feel are some keys to gauging intentionality? Okay. I would say, like I mentioned earlier, intentionality. What what are the intentions? I'm I'm probably a little bit more bolder when I was younger, and probably still a little now. I'd be like, so what? I, I would ask people, so what we doing? <laughs> you know, that's number one. Like, so what we doing? Like, like you know, after a couple of days, I wouldn't rush right away. But after a couple of days, I'd be like, so what we doing? But but my way to engage people, I was big on. I wanted, you know, one of my big must have was I wanted someone who can pray with me. I wanted someone who I can go to church with, pray with, you know, worship everything with. And I wanted that. And I didn't want someone who just say, yeah, I'll go to church. And then, you know, they don't really do nothing. So what I would do is I would, I would, uh, number one, take them to my church. And, and I would, one, one way I knew is I was like, hey, you want to go to church with me Sunday? See what they say. Oh man, I, I, you know, I'm hit, I'm getting up with the boys or whatever. Okay. So you don't go every Sunday, number one. That's not what I want. I wanted someone who had a relationship. So I was like, okay, fine. Next Sunday, hey, you want to, you know, is your schedule open? Did you want to go to church with me? And they were like, oh. you know, if they had another excuse, I knew this person wasn't the one. If they had two Sundays and they weren't trying to, you know, everybody don't go to church every Sunday. And I get it, you know, life happens, things happen. I'm fine with that. But if you're consistently not showing that you want to, I'm not going to nag you, number one. I'm not going to beg you. You know, I want to see if if it's in your heart to do, you know, check those boxes. And that's kind of way that I engage, you know, gauge, gauge people that I was dating. And then when they came to church, how did they act? Did they come in like this was the first time they entered the church building? Shy, <laughs> not saying anything. And so you kind of, kind of, don't don't make it seem like you're testing them, but actually try to test them on some of the things that are your must haves. You know, like we would, I would bring them into church, see how they did. When it was praise and worship, I'd be like, hey, come on now. You know, and he'd be, you know, they just sitting there stiff. I want someone to be like, okay, you saw that, you know, praise them with me, you know. I don't want someone to still sitting there, but I knew what I wanted, you know. I knew that I wanted someone when it's praise and worship, when the world's work, you know, when the worship is getting strong even their hands is raised they praising god they're not afraid of that so i knew i wanted that because i you know i knew that's what i wanted that's what i had and i didn't want to limit what i was doing you know just from you know the person that was coming on so i was just i would look at some of those things and engage that i would see how they were with kids um i actually didn't mind a man with kids so so it was just some things that i was just kind of you know doing on the side to kind of test that out was this person the one for me and were they or, or, or were they just putting up a front and saying that this is who they were just to get me mm -hmm. so, so i love that and i i hear in you saying that that you you knew yourself first and you knew um you knew your deal breakers and you weren't going to settle for less than, and you didn't just take their word for it. You made them prove it. I love that. So um, <clears throat> for mine and Everlyn, those are those are key, key, key. Like I'm probably gonna reiterate a little bit of what you said and add to it because I do believe dating it, it's kind of double, right? So in order to get to know yourself, you gotta date. But in order to date well, you got to know yourself. So you got to, you're kind of doing this like flex here from side to side. Like you learn so much about yourself from others coming into your life and pointing things out like, hey, 
you're selfish with your time or hey you are indecisive you're like well i don't think i'm indecisive why would you not think that because self isn't going to tell self you're indecisive self's gonna be like i just take a while to choose some things you know or i'm not selfish i just don't like sharing my space that's that's what i convinced myself you guys um so in dating if i'm gauging intentionality i always ask myself where am i at first i'm always like okay sarah where are you at and i'm like uh you know you know i because I, i've said this i'm like lord i just want some company and as soon as i pray for that like somebody just be around that's where the situation ship or the cuffing happens because company is not companionship company is just that someone who's going to take up your time company just want some company right so I asked myself, where am I at? And I asked myself, am I really for real, for real serious about sharing my time, my space, my thoughts, my goals, and my dreams? If the answer is no, which it has been successfully for 10 years because I've been single for 10 years, then I just don't date at all. If I'm not willing to give those things up, I just don't date. But as far as gauging someone else's intentionality, because my intentionality is important too, and we have to be honest, ladies. We're not the only ones who get cuffed. We cuff people up too. We be like, come and watch this movie and and then leave. Like <laughs> we have that, we have that same power to, you know, have a brother over. It's like, order some Uber Eats. He order and you be like, all right, well, I'm done eating and leave, you know. So gauge in my intentionality first and then gauge in the other person's intentionality. Um, I always look at how um a man treats themselves, you know. I've gone on dates where um, the guy is ordering something like chicken tenders. I was like, oh, you know what? Don't worry, I'm treating. He'll get the ribeye steak. You're not a person I'm gonna be with because you're flexing on your pockets, but you about to go all out on mine just because I said, you know, I'm a treat. I also um, look at the fact that I must be chosen. So Everlyn, I love how you ask, what are we doing here? Let me tell you, you a brother be in a whole dark. I'm not asking. I'm, I'm just not going to ask, what are we doing here? If you don't tell me what we're doing here, I'm assuming we are doing nothing here. So it's important for a guy to define that to me. Like, hey, Sarah, you know, I'm dating you. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and so that I know because it's going to be his job to lead going forward. And if you can't lead me just into dating, we really probably not going to go too much further. And the third one is I observe a man's routines. You know, um, if he texts me at 11.45, good morning, it's like, well, what you been doing since six to now? And I'm not like, you need to be up praying, da, da, da. But you can find out a lot about a man's routines. Um, it's, you can learn a lot by how, if he's in bed by four o'clock at night, because he was, I, I dated a guy who smoked a lot. And he'd be with his boys all night smoking a lot. And would get up at four o'clock in the afternoon sweetheart, the, the day is over. I'm, I'm working on Tuesday. You still on, you stuck on Monday. Like we, I'm prepared for Tuesday. You know, I'm meal prepping and stuff like that because I don't want to have to convince you into routines. I don't want to have to convince you into structure. I don't want to have to convince you how to choose me. I want those things to be something that you've already done. When you choose yourself, you take your time seriously. You're not playing around. You're, you know, when you are convinced that you are already chosen by yourself, I don't have to convince you what I'm doing. So I kind of look at those things and those things are um, how I consider someone's intentionality because I've literally dated the guys who's also said, let's let our first date be at church. I'm like, oh snap, I got me a wonder. <laughs> I got me a man. And that's the same one who ain't had no good routines, okay? Same one without a car, same one without a goal, no vision. I'm like, dad, because men are getting crafty. You know, people are crafty. We as humans are crafty. I know how to tell you what I need to tell you to get what I want from you. So, but you can't flex me out your actions. You can't convince me out of those. I saw you do what you did, right? And so those, those is how I gauge intentionality. Um, for me, uh, I have some of my friends on the line and they know just like a simple example of like going to the grocery store. I'm never just going to the grocery store and don't have a list in mind of things that I want, because if I'm just going in the grocery store and I don't have like an idea of what I want, I'm just going to pick up anything that I see. Like maybe because I'm just hungry, I'm just going to pick up anything. And so I like to have, I like to know what I want. And when it comes to like dating, 
is that like I'm I don't want to just because eventually it's going to lead to marriage and so I don't want to just date based off of common interests or because we are you know um we can vibe together you know or we can kind of hang out or whatever that's not what I'm trying to date for I'm trying to date because our purposes will align and so in order for me to date with intentionality I have to know what my purpose is in order for me to know that I have to be close to God you know and so finding a man like that he also has to be close to God because that means like I don't want to just look if he goes to church because sometimes it's people who are church goers but they're not church but they're not Christ disciples they don't follow Christ you know and so just because they go to church don't mean that they follow Christ what is your relationship with him you know like can you submit to God because if you can submit to God then I can submit to you because I know you're going to be leading me to Christ you know like I don't need to be led anywhere else but to Christ. And even if something goes wrong, I need him to be able to go to God and ask God, how do I love your daughter? You know, how do I love your daughter? I want to be able to go to God and be like, how do I love your son? You know, and so with gauging intentionality, I feel like we have to go to, you know, the person who created that man, you know? Yeah. And so that's what I feel with gauging intentionality. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, and I want to go back. Just, this may just be me being open, but um, Evelyn, uh, when we say just a, a few, uh, after a few dates, we'd be like, okay, so uh, what are we doing? What, what, what's a few as far as like time? Because like I, with, for me, it, it's within like a month. Like, yes or no, yes yeah or no. This, this whole like six months, I would actually been, like, oh, so where are we? I don't even understand that. I can't comprehend that. Well, it, it was it was different with each dude. I would kind of gauge it depending on how often we went out and actually dated, you know, how our conversation was. And then I'd be like, so what are we doing? I would just ask. But I will say that my husband, I did not have to ask what we doing. Mm. I will caveat with that. I did not have to ask what we doing. He led and was like, I think you the one, like early off. Like, I was like, boy, don't play because we can go to the courthouse. Like, that's how we had this conversation. And he was like, he was like, he was like, man, he was like, so, you know, are you talking to anyone? You know, because we had dated, I think, I think this was probably three weeks in. And I was like, I was like, well, you know, I'm just seeing what, what's going on. Like, and he was like, and he was like, well, I don't want us to be with no one else. You know, I want to see where this takes us. And I was like, okay, well, you got it then, you know, but he initiated, he let me know you know where he stood so I will say my husband did not I did not have to ask him that but other men I did ask after a couple of weeks maybe four or five you know like what what are we doing you know because I didn't you know want to be in a position where I'm you know saving you know only talking exclusive to exclusively to this one person and then he's not feeling the same and then what if I meet someone else and they're like hey what's up can I get your number I used to be like if I was dating someone I'd be like no you know, but if I was like, hey, we're just casually talking and dating. Okay, yeah, you can get my number and see where this goes. <laughs> you know, but, you know, a guy, I think a guy will, I never, and I guess probably doing that was kind of pushy to the guy in a way, but I never wanted to feel like I had something more invested in a relationship than what the guy was willing to give me back. Like, I didn't feel like I, I didn't want to be falling for this guy and all in love and, you know, ready to settle down. And he's thinking, oh, I'm just cool. We just hanging, you know, I didn't ever want to be like a level higher and ready to go. And then he's not as serious. So that's why I would pose that question, because, you know, if we're just chilling, dating, if that's where you're at, cool, that's fine with me. I know where to have my mindset then. I didn't want to be so falling for someone who wasn't ready for that right now and I was actually cool with it like a lot of people feel you know when you're single you you know you're you, you know you're looking for someone to marry I really I was one of those girls I was not ready to get married young I did not want to get married young you know I and I guess I paid as some some of that you know a lot of that to my mother she had kids at a young age and struggled a lot and she was real real and transparent with us on her struggles on not having kids when you're young live your life go out and go have fun and she was real transparent she she showed us like 
you know, I struggled. She was like, I didn't have money to go out to go hang with my friends. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that because I had kids at a young age. So she was saying, don't do that. And so, so when I was raised, I went up like, no, I ain't trying to have kids. You know, you know, I ain't trying to do this. I ain't trying to do that. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to travel. And that's what I did. But a lot had to, had to do with my mom and the example and her being real with me from the jump as well. Okay, nice. Um, so, in uh, staying somewhat in that vein, um, as far as not wanting to uh, give more than what you're getting, um, but admittedly, I am there, okay? It's like, no, I'm, I'm not about to be, you know, thinking of a couple of forevers and you over here thinking, you know, just six months, you know, you know, cuffing season. And when the season's over, you know, we go our separate ways. Like, I, I need us to be on one accord or on separate ones completely. So, um, in, um, well, everyone may not have that mindset, but in helping with making sure that you are on one accord with the person that you are are dating um with in whatever accord that is you decide to have what are some tips that you ladies have that's anyone on the panel I guess some tips with anyone that you're dating um, already know within yourself. Why, why am I dating? Um, I'm gonna be honest. Um, maybe I'd be too honest. Sometimes I was dating in the, in the get go. I just wanted to have fun. I didn't want a husband. I did not want someone who'd be calling my phone all the time. I did not want that when I started dating because I, I did not want kids early. So so I knew, you know, a dude coming over, rubbing on me, trying to get me in the bedroom. It wasn't going to happen because I was doing everything in my power not to have kids young. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't want to be trapped down. I even had one dude tell me, oh, you don't have my kid. Oh, no, I'm not. And you can go ahead and go. Like, <laughs> like really, like, dudes will try to lock you down, too. Don't, don't get it twisted. And they'll lock you down, and they're not trying to have a relationship. They just want you to have the kid so that they can have ties to you forever and that you'll be stuck with them not necessarily they trying to marry you so I knew what I didn't want so I would date dudes go out have fun come home and and and, and I didn't want you at my house you couldn't leave nothing at my house don't don't leave a bag don't leave no shoes oh sorry you forgot this way you going out the door like no don't leave nothing because you're not getting comfortable here like I was that type of person and then when I started to really want to settle down with someone that's when I you know um like Lori said I had a list and I actually prayed to God like send me someone this is my list God but if there's something you want to scratch off on this list that's fine with me too <laughs> but send me someone who I wanted God like like and my husband, he checked off most of the stuff on my list. He didn't even check off everything, but that's who God had for me. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I knew it. That's who God sent for me. And and I had my list. And I would. And, and when I dated someone, after a while, if they weren't checking off a lot of the stuff on my list, I'm like, this just ain't going to work. You know, like, I was in it to really find, I was ready to settle down. I was ready to find someone who I wanted to be with. And, and I was looking at my list, but in a way to where I wasn't trying to hold them up to this high standard. I had certain things on my list, like, like one thing on my list, I preferred older men. I did not want a younger man. I preferred older men because I wanted someone who was more established. I wanted someone who was more set, you know, who knew what they wanted. I didn't want no one who'd be on the PlayStation or playing games all day with boys at the house and, you know, I didn't want that. You know, I didn't mind them, you know, having friends or whatever, but I didn't want someone who was on the system or like smoking all day or whatever, not with a steady job or anything. I knew what I wanted. God sent me my husband who was younger than me. 
And I was like, well, what you doing? Like, he was, you know, I'm like, I can't be nobody's cougar. Like, no. <laughs> like, Lord, I wanted an older man. So I was like, no, Lord. Like, who is like, you know, so my husband's like, oh, so you now, you trying to be a cougar now. I'm like, wait a minute. But my husband, he was established. He was young. He loved God. Like, he meant all that stuff. So he was actually, you know, most of the time when a younger guy would come, I would dismiss them. Like, nah, I ain't trying to do young. I'm sorry. You know, I ain't trying to raise nobody child. You know, like. I would be like, no, but when he came, my husband came, I didn't turn him away and I knew his age and I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And now we've been married. So be willing to adjust some of the things that you initially thought that you wanted, you know, when God sends you the one, but you know, within a, you know, even though he wasn't older, he still checked off all the other stuff that I was looking for. So that's my sense. Okay, and uh, we'll actually stay with you. Oh, Sarah, you want to add something? Oh, yeah, I was going to answer um, the question. You said, what are some tips um, to win in love during time and seasons, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I was going to, I like Everlane's, like I feel like you are going, you're, you're, you're um, what's the word called? Where you're in front. Anywho, I'll, I'll Google it. Um, <laughs> I would definitely agree knowing why you're in it. Um, I always say this to all of my girlfriends. I say to thine self be true. Like stop whatever you do, tell yourself the truth. Mm -hmm. It softens the blow if it blows up. It helps you be happy when it does go well. If you say like, Everlyn, I love it. When you say, um, you know, I, because I'm older than 25 and so I remember thinking that 25 was you know buy your house get this picket fence 2.5 kids and um, I'm in preparation for a husband and um, I have not enjoyed singleness so I had to learn like Sarah in order for you to be this amazing wife that you want to be or whatever that is that you want to do you got to do that for yourself first so being true to yourself, assessing those things, you might find out dating is not the time for you. You might find out, you know, like Evelyn said, like I liked a certain thing, but I fell in love with this. And so when you're open and honest with yourself, you know, first, like really, like when you open and honest with yourself first, then you can take the guy who says, I'm not dating you exclusively. And you're like, well, shoot, I just enjoy having fun with you. And as long as no boundaries are breached and no, all these things are, you know, crossed out, then if it doesn't work, it doesn't hurt as much because you were honest. You were honest enough to say, you know what, this person's fun. We were, we get to go to go to dinner and we watch a football game. He likes football, I like football, um, because you learn from that versus um, convincing a man through our works, and then you roll over and find out. Dang, he ain't my type. Now you gotta go lay out on church and get somebody to lay hands. You need some oil, you gotta roll around. You know, just being honest with yourself where you're at. And I think that's the biggest thing in winning in dating is knowing your purpose, um, like Lori said, because if you are supposed to be catching flights in your purpose and this person likes to, they got a fear of heights, that's probably not gonna work. And then um, knowing yourself and you mash those together and walk in this journey and it'll all come together. Awesome. I wanted to say one thing for me um, is like outside of dating, because I know sometimes people use dating to like find out what they like and um, different things, how they are. I know one thing for me is that I have friends, like girl and guy friends, is that when we hang out, they show, they like tell me things in myself that I know I need to work on, you know, or they highlight things that I'm really good at that I may not, you know, um, be able to see or like pay attention to. And so that's really good with having just guy friends where they're just friends, you know, they don't want anything from you, but they just want to edify your life is that they tend to show you things and they give that guy perspective. It's always good to have that different guy perspective and for them to show things in you that you wouldn't have otherwise seen. And so I think it's really great to have platonic friendships around you to show you who you are, you know, and affirm things in you that you wouldn't have seen. Nice. And um, I have, we have a question here from the audience from Malaysia. Um, she asked, can you all share your specific standards on what's on your list? 
So maybe, um, I, I know my list is like two pages long, so maybe your top five to eight. I feel like 10 is like a long number, so five to eight. Top, uh, top ones on your list. I know mine was, and I can't remember the specific because it's been so long, y'all. But <laughs> I know one of my things was that I I was specific. I wanted him to have a relationship with God, number one. I wanted him to have a relationship with God. I wanted him to be established or, you know, knowing what he, you know, had goals, like goals where he was going somewhere, not he was fine with just chilling and staying in the same job forever. I wanted him to have goals to proceed. And I, I like a man that's ambitious and, you know, doing stuff, you know, that was something I like. Um, and I wanted him to be a um, good personality, funny, you know, I can't be with someone who's dry. Me and my husband, we laugh at each other all the time and do stupid stuff. Even now, like being married for 11 years, people, you know, we've asked people like, how long do you think we've been married? And they'll say two years, just how, how silly and stupid we are sometimes. But I like to have fun. Like was there a, a guy who can make me laugh and have fun? I want that just, you know, not to be all stuff and be in the house and can't, you know, have fun. And I like to be adventurous and travel. Like me and my husband, we've done a lot of crazy stuff. We've done off-roading on Jeeps, zip lining, done some traveling, um, just some deep sea diving, all just trying different stuff together, just adventurous together. So I wanted that adventure and I wanted someone who, um, wanted kids so it definitely had to be a, someone who wanted kids because I knew I wanted kids so that was some of my top things that I wanted uh, I'm with um everything as well of course he has to have a relationship with God love God more than me as a matter of fact and um like I want him to be adventurous for us to travel um a big thing that I realized that I needed to have on there was that they have kids you know I've encountered men who don't want to have kids I'm just like that's not me I want kids and I want to give a future to you know other kids so like Evelyn I know she has an adopted son and I want to adopt you know I want to give kids um a future who wouldn't have otherwise have a future if nobody adopted them and so that's a big thing for me as well as um them also having a mindset of not just being stuck in one place, like them wanting to have multiple streams of income, like they see different areas in which they can serve. And not only having that, but also having um, a place where they just serve, you know, or they volunteer. Like that really is really important to me that they can serve somewhere without getting paid. Okay. All right, y'all. I feel like we all have the same list, but I'm the same mine. <laughs> um, definitely a relationship with Christ. It. I, we just can't go nowhere. I was literally in devotional today, like, man, please don't leave me, Lord. <laughs> so I just know um, we're not going too far without that. Multifaceted. Um, growing up, having to accommodate for all of life's trials and tribulations. I'm a very multifaceted person. So this person can't be flat they would have to be able to adjust and shift with me and I need to be able to adjust and shift with them. And we are all in different facets, um, vision oriented, knowing how to, um, having a vision, you know, a lot of times you can ask me, I'm like, Oh, you know, not the, what do you see yourself in five to 10 years? Like, oh, okay. If you had anything going for you, what would it be? If it's a, you know, cool. Like that's probably not going to work. Cause I'm not a, you know, cool type of person. So vision oriented, a big giver, like you got to be a giver. I'm always giving something like, let's go get a thousand dollars right now. Like dude can not, and I was like, yeah, he's gonna, that's going to leave us with two bucks. Like, I don't care. We're going to live off that two bucks. It doesn't matter because I love to give. And interestingly, I don't have a preference on man with children. I want them to have children because it lets me know that you can commit to something. And it's nice seeing that before you commit to me and a child is a good way to see that and I too would like to adopt as well so um we got the same list y'all <laughs> and funny of course he like how you gonna date me and not be funny I dated a guy who was stuffy like literally he did not laugh at none of my jokes y'all exactly he had me questioning my gift I was like see lord you said I was funny <laughs> he don't laugh so yeah definitely gotta be funny I love it. I love it. And um, like I said, my list is two pages long. Um, 
It's actually my second list. I actually, I had a list when I was younger. Uh, and that one, that one admittedly was probably about 75% um, like looks, 25% things I actually need in life. Um, but I think in college, I, I wrote a new list. Um, and one that I actually sat with myself and with God and was like, okay, Lord, what do I need? <laughs> and what are the characteristics of, of uh, a mate that would um, provide these things? Um, what are uh, the things that I would need in a mate? And also um, I asked, you know, what characteristics of a mate will bring balance? So like for one of mine, um, pretty much I have the same list as y'all, um, but another additive, uh, or not additive, but another one of my uh, points is that he be financially, um, they be financially uh, literate. Um, because I know like Sarah J, I, I can be a really good giver, too much of a giver at times. Um, I often will give beyond um, and leave myself lacking. Um, and I'm okay with that, but I know that I need someone, or at least I feel I, I need someone who isn't quite that way. Someone who, yes, still has a heart, but it's like, okay, babe, um, we're going to give this, okay? Because we still got mortgage and all this, we still need to take care of. Um, so to bring that balance, because I, I really will just give, like, way too much. Like, my parents didn't let me bring my car to college until sophomore year, because I knew that I'd just be driving around everybody and we don't need. Like, that's, that's just how I am. <laughs> if I see you need it, you got it. Um, so I, I feel that I need someone who will be able to be that balance for me. Um, so in some, some cases, finding that balance and also, um, emotionally, um, I give a lot and I'm there for people a lot, but I feel that I need someone who will be able to be that piece for me as well. And in that listening ear, as much as I listen to others, I actually do need someone who will listen to me as well. Um, so I encourage uh, us as we are building that list because I'm still adding on to my list. I don't know about y'all. I'm still adding on. Um, and in that adding, adding those things that I know are uh, that I need um, or will help to bring balance for me. Well, I would say too, your list, don't forget to put sexy, handsome, which you want oh, muscles. Yeah, yeah, I mean, don't <laughs> people feel like their list got to be super spiritual? No, like you got to be married to this person for the rest of your life. You don't want to be married to someone you're not attracted to. So, you know, like I knew I didn't, I don't like no skinny dude, no toothpick. Some people prefer that. That's fine with me. I like to grab on to something like I knew sexy, you know, a little bit thick bone I didn't want skinny so you got to know what you want and don't be afraid to put it down there because you I don't want to be next to someone living and married to someone for the rest of my life and I'm not attracted to them it won't last because you can't you have to have that attraction so don't be afraid and be don't have your list so super spiritual that you don't ask for what you know you want I want muscle I want something I can grab onto I don't want skinny I want him to be sexy fine because I want to be able to, I want to want my husband too for the rest of my life. I want that. So don't, don't forget to put that on your list, ladies. Like, like marriage ain't just for someone just to have to be with someone. You've got to have that connection. You've got to have that romance, all that you want out of your, your spouse. So don't forget to put that on there. Absolutely. Um, Yes, I want to want my husband. That is, that is definitely true. Um, and I want to ask um, the ladies here, this is a, a question to the audience. Um, you can definitely share um, any, anything that's been sticking with you so far, uh, but I also want to ask you uh, how, how well do you feel that you know yourself and what you do? Anyone in the audience? That is a very amazing question. By the way, my name is Malaysia. Um, Gloria is my best friend. Ooh, ooh, she did amazing. But um, I would say I know myself very well. I'm still learning, but at the point I'm at now, I feel like I know myself very well to know what I need from a man. 
like I've been in, I've been literally for the past three years just on this journey of discovering more of who I am and really embracing singleness. And um, it's it's caused me to to really love who I am. Like God has literally exposed the things I like and don't like. And I was like, God, why you why you show me all of that? But it was needed. It was needed. So um, I hope that answered your question. I don't want to be rambling too much. Well, no, yeah, that that does. Um, and I I guess I should preface it. Uh, well, it's not too late to preface, but. Uh, I'll add, um, as was shared earlier, I believe it's Everly who shared first. Um, like you, you gotta know yourself really, um, or maybe Sarah or both of you, I'm not sure. You gotta know yourself first before you can really get into, um, knowing what you need, um, and what you're looking for in a mate. So yeah, just wanted to do it a little self-reflection at this point to see, you know, do you feel like you do know, uh, know yourself enough to know what you see? So yes, that definitely did answer the question. Thank you. Um, and I love that um, you said that you found that in embracing your singleness. That's awesome. Anyone else? Um, as well as answering the questions, any, anything that's been sticking with you? Please feel free to share. For me, um, and this is being Marie by light. Anyway, so for me, I feel like there, I remember a time when I didn't know myself. Um, and I think it's, I think it's as equally important to remember those times so that when you make that transition and you start to embrace and know yourself, you, you can reiterate or remember what it was like to not know and make those decisions um, when it comes to deciding on what relationships to be in. Because there were times when I would see those red flags and ignore them because if that's if it if it went against a, what if it went against what I wanted I would ignore the red flags like this guy is not the person for me and so it came it had to be for me to be in enough situations where you know things end up not going the way that I wanted them to or the way that I try to build that man to be for it to go in that direction that I start to learn about myself like okay what is important to me what do I require what is more and it's necessary for me to be happy than for me to just for the time being be satisfied with what the person's doing. It was a long time that I let myself just be satisfied with what I was given. And, and it was weird because when I was younger, I had all these criteria for myself as to why well, my checklist was over the top when I was 16. Like he had to do all kinds of things. And then as I got older, I started to eliminate things from my checklist. And in a way that was kind of me trying to dumb down what I really wanted in a man because I wanted to have that man. And I thought that my list is too extensive. So as I got older, I was diminishing part of that list. And when I saw that things were not happening the way that I needed it to, I started changing again and like putting those things back on the list. Like, okay, maybe I do need a person who is completely honest. Like some things like that is not necessarily honesty, but it was just certain things that I let get off the list that really needed to be there so for me learning who i was um it helped me to bring it to full circle like i can't just let certain things be and i can't let certain relations that i i let myself be a part of keep me from being who i was like there was times when i was with guys who didn't allow me to be myself and i was changing who i was just to match what they were doing so i can make them happy which I thought would make me happy because I would get them. But I had to learn that you can't compromise your happiness and compromise who you're, you, you are as a person to make the other person be with you or be satisfied with you. So I don't know. I kind of start rambling. Sorry. But it just made me think about everything. that uh, This, to me, was such a great conversation because it made me think about everything that I've been through with different guys. No guy that I've dated has ever been the same. And it's making me look at my current relationship and how I'm learning about me in my thirties, how I was when I was 20 and I'm liking who I'm becoming. And I know that there's more things that I'm going to learn about myself and who I'm going to grow into as a woman. But this conversation has definitely helped to shed light on the stuff that I was going through and how I was handling it, what I'm doing now and handling it. And then who I'm going to be 
a few years from now or what's going to be happening then. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't want to talk about me with my water. <laughs> but that, that is awesome. And um, yeah, like, uh, like Sarah was saying earlier, we really have to take that time to reflect on ourselves. Like that's so important. Um, it's like um, a lot of times people want to be like, yes, I'm forward moving, no looking in the uh, rear view mirror. But sometimes it's okay to look. We don't go back to or dwell, but looking sometimes help us to be like, oh yeah, I remember that pothole back there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and you know take a detour to avoid this one up here because we don't need to relive that. You know, so sometimes taking a peek back can help to even repel you forward uh, further. So, definitely. I would say for me is that I keep um, a journal. Like, so it's been like four years where I've kept multiple journals and like with the peeping back, like it kind of helps me with like seeing the progress, you know? Um, and then it also helps me because sometimes, you know, you have men that come along that even though they look different, sometimes they possess the same qualities or the same red flags as another person did. And so when I journaled that, I would go back and be like, okay, this is what the same guy did, you know? And so it kind of helps me if I tend to forget. So if anybody likes to journal or if you like to do voice memos, I know that helps as well. I never thought about the voice memos as a journal, but I love that. Because I know a lot of, some people aren't writers. Like I, on my floor, I got about legit eight, eight different journals that I keep different ones for different things. But yeah, everyone isn't that interested. <laughs> in that, so voice members, I really like that. Were you gonna say something, Evelyn? No, I, well, I, I was thinking, you know, like you just gotta make sure you listen to when God's giving you red flags. Like even in my days when I wasn't trying to find, but I was having fun dating. Like I'm just, you know, I'm just having fun. I'm dating or whatever. And even when I see red flags when I was dating, sometimes I would either ignore them, like. Like, I would go and, like, go to the club and hang out in the club with, like, some of my girlfriends from time to time, but I didn't want to be up in there every weekend, because every time I went to the club, I hated the smoke smell. I don't have, I have something with smoke, y'all. I, I couldn't take it. <clears throat> so my hair smelled like smoke, so I had to wash it, do all this whole thing every night, because I, I, I hated the smoke smell. I don't know what it is, but, so I wasn't in the club a lot, just only because of the smoke smell. Like, if it was, like, a nice lounge or whatever, that was more of my vibe, but, like I dated this dude, we were just having fun. He had some connections like with the radio station and all that. So, you know, I got into like concerts and stuff. So I was like, oh yeah, you know, I knew, you know, he wasn't the right one, but I was like, hey, I'm just having fun. I'm not trying to settle down. And like, he went to clubs a lot. So I knew that was not me, but I did it. That To me, that was one of my no-nos, always in the club, I know. But I was having fun. I'm like, ah, I ain't trying to get married to him. I know he's not the one. So why not have fun? Like red flags left and right, but I was like, I'm having fun. <laughs> Finally went to a club. They started shooting bullets and flying and everything. And I was like, God, I got your message. Like you ain't got to tell me no more. <laughs> like, and I broke it off with him after that. I was like, I was like, does this happen a lot? He's like, oh yeah, but don't worry about it. I'm like, I don't, it, it was like, <laughs> I seen the mess, but it was like that was like a, a like God was like girl stupid like I didn't gave you all these warnings like even if you having fun he is not the one and that last one when we went to clubs and bullets people were shooting each other and stuff and I found out later somebody died in the club like like this ain't me <laughs> and so sometimes it take a little bit more for you to catch the red flags but that would have to be mine you know it, even if you're exploring and stuff if you constantly seeing the red flags it's like sometimes it's hard because you having fun too it's like i ain't gonna admit it's i was having fun you know getting in the backstage concerts and stuff i was having fun but i was like this ain't this ain't gonna work for me <laughs> like this is not gonna work so yeah that was like the red flag and i was like god i heard it i seen it you know i'm ducking and dodging bullets this ain't for me this is not the life i want to live but <laughs> Not the 
Were you gonna add something, Sarah? Yeah, I was gonna. I know we're. Um, I was just gonna play on the other advocating side, and I love your East Side Atlanta story, Everly. No, no shots to anybody <laughs> on the East Side because I live on the East Side, just on two eighty five. I wanted to kind of play the reversal or the um, advocating side, um, and going back to just being real with yourself. Um, for me, I didn't know that half the time I was toxic myself, and not like toxic Chris Brown. Not talk to Chris Brown now, but Chrisette Michelle, probably, you know, and it took me, and I love hearing um, the single women who are taking the time to take three years to like discover or two years or whatever the case may be, being able to learn about you from your self perspective. Um, but I learned that uh, some of the things that were adjutants for me or things that I did not or could not deal with in a man was unresolved childhood trauma from childhood and so the person if they did said things they got what my mama should have got and what he about to get or what my school teacher in third grade should have got and on top of that so even in the events of knowing and learning yourself and being true to yourself being able to heal those things and yes trauma doesn't really disappear it just sort of kind of gives you a better outlook it happens and you start healing and you start to think you your first response would have been a you about to get cussed out but that once you go through that healing process and you start knowing yourself you can say hey this would trigger me back then or this would have back then you would have got cussed out and I like what Lori said like reading the progress reading the seeing your progress like back then you would have got hung up on today I'm gonna count to 10 I'm gonna inhale exhale and then I'm gonna say this is a red flag this does not work for me this has not worked for me in the past and I don't see it working for me in the future and just rerouting that um, because sometimes some things aren't working, not just because of the man, it's sometimes our ability to receive on that side or sometimes we don't see it correctly because it's trauma there or abandonment or reject, whatever those things are. And so while spending your time in your singleness and I always hear people say, in your singleness, prepare to be a wife. I'm like, in your singleness, go to therapy, okay? <laughs> get what you need to get <laughs> and go to therapy like girl I need to be cooking him pork chops sis you need to be learning how to fend for yourself because there is a such thing and I don't know if Everlyn can speak to this probably not probably I don't know but there is a such thing with being in a room full of people and still feeling alone there is a such thing being in a marriage with a person and still sleeping alone those things still happen so I know this big celebration that we want to have, like when I get married, I've arrived, not quite sis. Um, so handle those things on the forefront. And so when you get into it, when those things do come up, the, um, the likelihood of you being able to communicate about those things, having those conversations, keeping the healthiness going, being responsible for your own happiness because you are being a whole woman before you get married is because you are having those things set up in place then being able to go with the flow. And even in dating, like you said, when you're having fun and you're learning, you're like, well, shoot, this is my fun partner. But as you get older, as you start dating more, you're like, shoot, I can have fun sitting here on the couch. I don't gotta go nowhere. I don't like the smoke smell. I hate having to wash and condition. Like you set those things up, but I think you start ground up, not leaves down. That makes any sense. I love what Sarah said. Like she literally brought up a point that I knew I wanted to mention. And it was a conversation I was having with my friends one time. And I was asking them, I was like, you know, what have you seen in your parents' relationship that you feel like you you could take into your relationship now? Because like, but what we've like witnessed, whether it was our parents, our grandparents, whoever we stayed with, whatever we had as a model for a relationship, is sometimes we take those same um patterns or same things that they did and we take it to our relationship whether it's good or bad and so one thing I knew that I wanted to take away from my parents relationship with my mom and my stepdad is they knew how to communicate you know um I've never heard them yell in all the years of my life and I knew that was what I wanted like I don't want to yell I don't want to scream to get my point across like I want us to talk um and have a calm conversation but with me like I'm only 21 and I've been through so much I've been through so many experiences and I know for me that I've been through a lot of trauma you know and I'm like now just healing is that for me dating 
um, like just to have fun. I just can't. I don't want to ruin somebody's life. I don't want to like get with them and then like they still see, you know, we're still going to have a certain like certain things that we have to deal with throughout life. But I don't want them to see like this me now. This me now is still going through deliverance, still going through therapy. And so, um, yeah, that is for me. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, it, it um it it seems to keep all going back to um knowing and being real with yourself. Uh, it's it's truly key. Um and on that note, I do want uh to ask this one last question, and that's um how essential do you feel loving yourself is in dating? And Lori you can start oh, I see Sarah's hand. I'll make it quick. I, I think it's kind of like being a healthcare provider in Corona. Absolutely essential. You get a t-shirt, you can get a driver's pass, you can be out all hours of the night. It doesn't matter because you are essential. Loving yourself is so essential in being in any relationship, family, sister, brother, mother, daughter, um, friend to friend, um, friend to guy, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband to spouse. Um, it's because you were responsible to love yourself. Everything isn't peaches and roses on the single side, and it's certainly not peaches and roses on the marriage side. So if you don't love yourself, then you won't be happy. And happiness is created, and it's worth creating, but you have to love yourself enough to do it. It's easy to say, forget, I'm going to sit down and watch Netflix. Honey, Netflix got something for us all, all day. So loving yourself is the thing that's going to keep you going, even when others can't congratulate or love you. And and I'm gonna chime off of that exactly everything <laughs> everything but like I heard someone say years ago that if you're on an airplane they tell you to put your oxygen mask on first and it's like some people will won't even even catch that to where you know you're worried about someone else before putting on your own oxygen mask so it's like you got to take care of yourself you got to make sure that yourself is good because a lot of people when they go into a relationship and you expect someone to complete you that's when you i think you get hurt more when it doesn't work out because you're relying on this person to make you happy you're relying on this person to fulfill the things that you feel that are lacking on yourself versus you being happy with yourself so when this relationship ends that's when a lot of people go into sometimes even a deep depression they go spiraling down because you relied on someone else to make you happy versus you being happy first. So when that thing that doesn't work out that you relied on so heavily to make you happy doesn't work out, then that's when everything starts spiraling down and it doesn't work out. So definitely make sure that you make yourself happy, that you are always making sure that you're doing a check on yourself. Like this is um, mental health awareness week right here. And so therapy, I, I always advocate for therapy. There's nothing wrong with getting therapy. Pray for yourself. E even seek out, you know, confidence that, you know, people who are around you that can pray for you when you're going through certain situations, someone to talk to, you know, have that person that, you know, you ain't got to worry about them spreading your business everywhere either, but, you know, someone that you can talk to to release what you have inside of you as well and someone that, that will keep it real with you. You got to have someone that will keep it real. Me and my husband, we keep it real so bad. Sometimes I'm like, did you really just say that to me? But I want someone to keep it real with me. I, I have friends who they can tell me anything. I can tell them anything. That's what I want, keeping it real. You got to have those people that help you keep it real. But you got to love yourself. So. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I love what uh, Sarah J said here. The relationship became the lifeline. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, expound on that a little bit, Sarah? Absolutely. Um, it goes back to what Evelyn was saying, um, you know, and being true to ourselves. You know, we sometimes want something so much and we finally get it. Either it is what it looks like or what we want it to look like or it's not. When it comes to a close, it's like nothing's worth having. You know, you, you see that so much where, and not just in men to women. I mean, the stock market crashed. People jumped off buildings. Like, because obtaining it and then losing it was far too much but then you have to wonder was there a self-love aspect I mean or did you put all your love that you had 
into this thing. And now that that thing no longer exists, whether it's a job, the car, the guy, um, the home, whatever it is, it does not change who you, that you are here. So loving yourself to the point to where you can be happy with what you have and not, and not loving yourself to the point to where you've lost yourself in them and you are requiring them because you guys, I'm going to be honest, that's a great responsibility requiring somebody to be everything for you like that's this obligatory that's that's a lot so when you love yourself and this person isn't always having to reassure your insecurities or always having to curb how they speak because that's the work that you haven't done and you make that their job that's too much that's too much of a task they need a salary so loving somebody loving yourself can handle half of that right and then you give the rest of that which is the burden to the lord to where nobody else has to really handle it but you and god and it is healthy so don't let the relationship become the lifeline because honey is short lived trust me awesome and lord do you have something to add Um, I love what Evelyn and Sarah said. Um, another thing I would just say is like, don't wait to do things that you feel like you can only do in relationships. So go ahead and take yourself out to the spa, to that restaurant, go travel, like, um, go ahead and get the pedicure. Well, get your pedicures constantly, get your feet done, you know, <laughs> like constantly do things. Don't wait till you get in the relationship to feel like you have to do that. So that's one thing I would add. And make it a necessity, not only in the, the physical, but also, like you said, the mental, the emotional, you know, make sure you're checking up on yourself in all aspects. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I feel like um, designating or accepting the designation of things that you're supposed to do in a relationship kind of adds the pressure, too, because, you know, you want to do those things. You want to go out to a nice dinner. You want to dress up. Uh, you want to take that trip, um, but accepting the designation from others that those are things that you're supposed to do with others can then cause you to feel like you need to find someone. But if you, you know, go ahead and make your own designation that this is something that I want to do and that I can do and I'm going to treat myself, then that can help to alleviate some of the pressure and um, possibly help you to not fall into uh, bad relationships or situations. Definitely. Um, and I think we have a question here. You can go ahead, Giselle. You can uh, unmute yourself. Hey, I'm really loving the feedback, and it's so timely. So I really appreciate the invite. Um, I love the whole self love thing. Is a whole journey that I think it requires a lot of time. Anyways, to embrace, it's not like a short term thing. And so for me, self-love has been thrown around so much, but identifying what that looks like for me and cultivating that has been such a journey that it helps me understand why I'm single and it helps me accept the fact that I am single and that I need more time because if I go in without really mastering what self-love look, self -love looks like to me versus the other person or versus what I see on social media about self-love, then I'm going to go into a relationship and not set my boundaries, not, you know, not be, you know, like Sarah says, be able to like depending on somebody else to really feed on to me with that lifeline. So right now, like what that looks like is helping me to understand what I'm going, what my expectations are going to be when I get into a relationship. And it's helping me just walk away from things a lot more um i think self-love discipline being able to tell ourselves so i could feel a little bit you know more confident in myself but there's so many little intricate things that um i think if we do master it um we will enjoy singleness a lot more than we think so yes definitely i love that and that um I think that speaks to, uh, I think, yeah, it was Malaysia who um, shared earlier about um, learning about yourself and um, learning what you want in your partner come, um, comes through taking that time to get to know yourself and your singleness. Um, 
yeah, it's just crucial. Um, so we are uh, winding down in, in time. I always want to make sure that I stay mindful of your time. Um, but one thing that I did want to share, um, a takeaway, is um, definitely um, boundaries in, in dating in general, uh, but also particularly in cup and season, boundaries are key. Let's get you some boundaries, okay? Uh, I love how Sarah Jade said it, <laughs> that, um, you know, you have to have your boundaries and know what you will and won't accept. And sometimes that may mean walking away and that may leave you alone, but um, the peace that you have can be quite a comfort. <laughs> so um, definitely boundaries are important for yourself as well as your relationship. Um, a lot of times um, our wants can cause us to uh, become a little lax on our personal boundaries so that we can um, enjoy the relationship more. But um, for long-term wellness with ourselves and in building a healthy relationship, it's important that we have our own personal boundaries and build those relational boundaries off of those. Um, I think that's what I believe. Um, so definitely wants to share that with you all. And I'd love to hear um, some, uh, some final takeaways that our panelists want to share. My, my, my final takeaway, real short and sweet, is just, just know what you want and what you, and, and know when to walk away. Just be, don't be afraid to walk away from a, a relationship or a person if, if, if it's red flags or if it's a funny feeling that you're having, like this, something ain't right, just be willing to walk away. Don't feel like you have to, you know, see something through with, with, with the person. If, if the red flag or something there, just walk away. That's what I did. And it, I think it really helped me throughout the years to just do that. That's my takeaway. Yes. I love that. Um, as I shared with you on our, um, our first initial call, like um, that gives me hope because I, my friends, they used to tell me, you, you're too quick, you're too hard on these men. It's like, but I, I see these traits that's just not gonna work for me. Why would I hold on to that? You gotta start how you wanna finish. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely gave me some encouragement that you, know, you knew what you wanted, what you needed, you stuck by it and you received, you know, uh, what you, you know, what you needed. And 11 years strong, congratulations, that's beautiful. Awesome. Okay, I'll do my closing. Yeah, mine is quick as well. Mine is thine self be true, do your work, and um, love and happiness is worth creating. So that's mine. Mine is quick as well, like definitely with doing the work with self um, and knowing, like being whole before you actually go into the relationship because the relationship won't make you whole. So those were the big takeaways. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Wholeness is key. Um, and I actually, I was talking to a friend yesterday and um, that um, it I, I don't know why I hadn't realized before, but um, in the Bible, it does tell us like to become one. And uh, it's only in, you know, God's math that one and one can make one. Uh, but in that two becoming one, that's two individual wholes themselves, then becoming one. Not partials, not halves. So they're not your better half. You're two wholes. And then become one. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, but yes, um, I love all those takeaways. I will open the floor now um, to our uh, to the other beauties uh, participants. Please do feel free to share any um, any final thoughts or takeaways that you have, um, or any quick questions. All right. 
I guess there aren't any. Um, I do pray that, uh, as always, that you did um, get some nuggets that um, will benefit you moving forward. And um, I want to end with a little prayer. Does anyone have any prayer requests? Prayer requests. All right. We'll go ahead and pray out. Father God, we come before you first saying thank you for this time that we have shared together. I thank you, Lord God, that you spoke through us, Lord God, and to us. I pray, Father, that um, the seeds that were planted today will continue to be watered and flourish that you will help us along our own personal journeys as we grow and grow in you and um, grow more in ourselves and even in uh, with more love for ourselves. And um, as we continue to go about our journeys, I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to guide us and help us, Lord, and uh, help us throughout this current cupping season and beyond. Um, that we may win in relationships, um, in loving ourselves, in knowing and being true to ourselves, and in loving ourselves, not just with our growth, but also in choices that we make for our lives. Um, anything left unsaid, unmentioned, or unknown, I lift it up to you in Jesus' blessed name, call it done and so. And I thank you, Lord God, for safe, uh, safety and health and mind and spirit in Jesus' blessed name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, ladies, for joining today. And um again, I hope that this was a blessing to you. It definitely was a blessing to me. I got some great nuggets that I will be applying um, as well as sharing. And as always, I will be sure to um send out the recording as well as the chat. Um, and I believe the ladies' information is in the chat um, as far as our panelists, uh, but if not, I will also be including them in the follow-up recap email. So you all have an amazing rest of your Saturday and weekend, and um, talk soon. Bye, Thanks. Bye.